There's a spectrum. Some, there's zero recovery. Some, there's complete recovery. In Nolan's case was so severe that he said, best case scenario, your son falls somewhere in the middle. Oh. Slam dunk! Go slam dunk! He has something called transverse myelitis, which is a one-time incident of uh, inflammation to his spinal cord. And he is now, has essentially a spinal cord injury. So many questions. <laughs> how do you how do you drive the power chair? Not with your head, but with your hands. <laughs> I remember when we were still inpatient at the hospital with him, one of the neurologists said, We can't predict what recovery is going to look like for your child. I think this territory of spinal cord injury recovery is so new that they have a hard time predicting what the outcome is going to be. Up until a decade ago, they thought that a spinal cord injury could not improve. Now they're seeing that when a spinal cord is injured, it can recover, and that new pathways can develop, old pathways can open up, but you have to keep moving. And to facilitate movement with someone that has very little movement on his own is very difficult. So a lot of kids don't have that opportunity or the facilities or the resources to make that possible. So it just sort of perpetuates the notion that recovery isn't possible. Yes. Oh, no. No one was at Children's Hospital for uh, three or four weeks when he was initially diagnosed. And you know the message that we received from the doctors there was that to not really expect much recovery and any recovery that we saw was going to happen within a relatively short period of time and that there would be nothing after that, um, which, you know, we understood, um, you know, it's their job to kind of prepare you for the worst, but at the same time, we weren't going to accept that for him. Good job! Ready? I mean, it's, we were lucky to have found families through social media and through our area that had already walked this path of spinal cord injury recovery and we just sort of flew on their coattails so you know reach out to the people that have done this before reach out to us we're always willing to help families and shorten that learning curve because life changes so quickly before this I didn't know anyone who had ever dealt with a kid that had severe paralysis but now we have plenty of families that we know and we're all learning from one another first having to forge this all on our own we would be we're so far behind where we are now. Perfect form. Perfect form. Could have went to 30. I'm ready. Our old house was a uh, 1970s colonial. We opened it up as much as we could, but you know we started to see that even with the changes, a more open floor plan, it still would have been very difficult for Nolan to live in the house just because there were still a lot of tight hallways narrow doors, and probably the biggest thing was that it was a two-story house. Right now, with him weighing 40 pounds, it's not really much of an issue. Jen and I can still carry him wherever he needs to go if his chair can't get there, but looking into the future, eventually he's going to be you know, a teen and a young adult, and carrying him up and downstairs, carrying him around the house. It would be a very difficult thing for Jen, not to mention anybody else that was tasked with caring for him. We started looking everywhere that we could to find people that were focused on recovery. We found some people at the Children's Institute that were doing some programs, and then we found similar programs in Louisville, Kentucky. And basically what that is, is it's, it's essentially just becoming active again. Instead of being confined to your wheelchair, getting up out of your wheelchair and moving. And even if he can't move, you know, helping him facilitate that movement. Do it with your head then. You'd be surprised. You would think a therapist's job is to believe in your child, but therapy for these kids is to bridge the gap between what they can do and what they need to do. Their job is to get him independent where he is now. Where our, we are always pushing for that next step of recovery, which might change the plan and is more difficult for them because what they were planning last month is different because now he has more movement or different movement. Let me see you move that little fin. 
instead of laying him on the couch and having all these supports around him, instead of putting him in a wheelchair that's fully supported with a chest strap so that he doesn't fall over, we give him the least support as possible so that he has to move and he has to use his muscles to fall and try to move back up. So it's really, really subtle differences that, that make a huge difference for him. The facility that we take him to in, in Kentucky believes that paralysis is only secondary to being immobile. You have to think about that. So you're only paralyzed because you're immobile. So if you become mobile again, even passively, you can change that paralysis. So it's not the initial event of becoming paralyzed that keeps them paralyzed. It's just the fact that they're no longer mobile after being paralyzed. So we know of cases where people have recovered and we don't I don't expect for Nolan to be the captain of the football team when he's 10 years from now, but I would like him to have independent use of his arms. I would like him to be in a manual wheelchair. I would like him to move out of my house one day, just like he should, like any um, college age kid his age will do eventually. So we have realistic expectations, but we're always sort of pushing the envelope to, to get better and to challenge the therapists around us to believe that too. You know, he's on a treadmill five days a week with people helping him move his legs and then he does similar activities with his arms so you know it's it's really helped him when we when we first left the hospital he couldn't even really hold himself up and now it's been what like two two and a half years later and they're seeing trace movements in his fingers and wrists so um, you know, recovery, recovery is possible, but you have to work really hard at it. And that's a testament to Nolan. He works, <laughs> he works out two hours a day, five days a week, so. How many adults can say that? Yeah, not me. It's changed pretty dramatically. You know, it's time that we don't get to spend together as a family. So it's had a very big impact on our lives. Nolan requires now and most likely indefinitely into the future. Many caregivers, when we first brought him home, we had caregivers almost 24 hours a day for him at night to turn him in nursing during the day while we work. Um, because he, in addition to the being immobile, there are other secondary complications that require uh, nurse oversight. So we've got people in our house all the time during the day, so that's a bit of an adjustment, but something that we felt strongly he adjusts to because that will be necessary in his future as well. Transverse myelitis and acute flaccid myelitis are very similar. They fall under the same umbrella. It's just a slightly different part of the spinal cord that might be injured, but with this surge of cases of this polio-like illness, it's important for us to spread this message of hope and recovery because we know that there are families this year, almost 200 of them, that are in the same position we were in three years ago, which is your world just changes in an instant and you're hearing from all of these providers that the outlook is very grim. But we've seen, even in this past year, his third year of being injured, this spontaneous recovery. And we have many reasons to be hopeful and these families should as well. The paralysis can be severe like Nolan's with upper and lower extremity involvement but as long as you keep moving and as long as you keep hoping that things will change that even that attitude will fuel how you position them on the couch. It will fuel the way that that you want them involved in the classroom. It will fuel the way that you have them interact with their peers and that small difference can really make a huge change and a huge difference in where their recovery goes. So always believe that there will be change because that has implications for how you interact with your child every day. And I think that is one of the reasons that we are upending our lives to go down to Kentucky next year because we're having a hard time getting buy-in from the therapists that we have here that no one can get better. So unfortunately, you're gonna to have to fight that fight and be an advocate for your child in every area of their life so that others around you can believe it too and I think that's that makes a world of difference. Give him kisses on his head. Yeah I was six and a half months pregnant when this happened to Nolan. Our two-year-old doesn't know any different. He uh, he helps us at times. 
he'll help you. he'll help feed Nolan, he'll help give him drinks, he'll help pick him up if he falls over in his stand or on the couch, he'll lift him up or he'll come get me and say, help, help, Nolan needs help. I, it's a testament to how resilient these kids are. I, it's difficult for us, it's chaos and it's pandemonium almost all the time when we're together. But no one doesn't know any different, Henry doesn't know any different, and this is just their normal and their lives. Despite the challenges that Nolan has physically and the challenges that our family has in normal everyday situations, our life is really normal. And the kids in Nolan's preschool class don't know him any different. And Nolan is just Nolan. And I think it's easy as a parent to get caught up in what could have been and what isn't and that will hold you back and that will hold your children back so life can be normal it's a new normal it's a different normal but it's it's very normal for us knock knock who's there dishes dishes who you should go put your hands up we look forward and i think some people have a really hard time moving past that loss and you know we have bad days too but by and large we're just looking forward instead of what we or he missed out on because of what has happened. It's a very odd dynamic and a very odd place to be, but I think that's what's helping Nolan because we think he can get better. Is that delicious? Delicious. Nolan Childs. Nolan Charles.